Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play the Journeyman Project 2 Buried in Time. Well, we are definitely somewhere else now. Arthur's gone, and Agent 3 is apparently the one who did this. And we're also at the point of no return, because our jumpsuit's disabled. We no longer have our jump biochip, so we can't get out of here. We're stuck in this missile silo. So let's start by taking a look around. Whatever Arthur did definitely shut down the power around here. Let's see what we can do about the power generator here. Hmm. Alright, well, here's the eject button. Okay, yeah, the core is burned out. Okay, okay. Non-lethal amounts of gamma radiation. Warning! The generator core will interfere with transport beams if not stored in your null time pocket. Keep that in mind. So let's see if we cannot find a replacement. And look around. And also talk about what Agent 3 was thinking. Because honestly, she pretty much explained her entire motivations herself. I really don't need to expand on her what she has been doing. Not a lot we can do with the power out, so let's go see. There's got to be another spare generator core somewhere. But I find that Agent... the... I really hesitate to call the, um, the antagonists in the Journeyman Project games villains. Because Elliot Sinclair and Michelle technically aren't really villains. Here's a core. You know because it's glowing blue. Alright, working condition. Wonderful. But both of them aren't really villains. They have a similarity of how they're... what they're driven by in order to do the things that they do. And that really is a fear. They do this out of fear. It's different where they get their fear from. Let's stick this in. Okay, wonderful. Power's back on, so... It's like it never happened, although Agent 3 is no longer here. But anyway. Elliot Sinclair and Michelle both get their fear from somewhere else. Elliot Sinclair's was a lot more simple. He was xenophobic. He didn't want, want change. He was afraid of others. Um, and the fear of alien contact and what it could do... Like, alien invasion. There's people out there who are afraid of alien invasion. And, will, and that will drive people to do really crazy things. Which was the entire motivation for Elliot Sinclair as the antagonist. Some photos here. Looks like this was her hideout because if you remember all the way back from the beginning, Agent 3 was supposed to be defending us. However, she was not available to actually defend us. She was probably here. Michelle, on the other hand, her fear is a bit more complex. She. Uh, how do I put this? She has a fear of humans, and human capability. That's what gets her bent out of shape, especially because of her historical back, like, what her missions were. Because, really, I don't think it's healthy that all of her research missions were war. That's gotta mess somebody up mentally, in any sort of way. Especially when, 400 years later, you're not learning about World War II or the Civil War anymore. It's definitely going to mess someone up. However, there's something else. And it was mentioned in her final paragraph of dialogue. I guess I could just call it a paragraph. But anyway, let's actually take a look around. I'll stop for a moment so we can actually look around the missile silo. There's this wonderful plasma tools business here. So let's see here. We have... It's a synthesizer. This is how Agent 3 has been getting around into places that 
she wouldn't normally have access to. We got a couple things here, like, for instance, we have a skeleton key. That was how she was able to get into the chest in the cellar to get to the secret storage room in Chateau Gaillard. Because remember, we still have the copper key. We have a glass pyramid here. And of course, that glass pyramid was what she put into the Deadland door in the caverns of Chichen Itza in order to get into the sacrifice room. We even found um, those replicated shards, and they were even called replicated shards, so they came from the synthesizer. Another one is the human heart, which of course synthesized, so it would have synthesized blood as per the evidence biochip. Here is a transport code, which we actually haven't seen before. This is the program you actually need to run. Yeah, so there is a transport code. Make sure you write that down and run the program as many times as you want, because you can, and make sure you have that code down, because we're going to need it very soon over here for a moment. We also have this business down here, but not really much we can do about it. I'm not sure what plans they are for anyways. Well, looks like we have this posted note down here too. Okie dokie. And finally, we can actually take one last look at the news network. Turns out, in fact, that one of the headline stories has changed slightly, adding a new story at the beginning, and that's actually at the Symbiotry Technology discussions. INN will return after a word from our sponsor. In a late-breaking update from the technology discussions, the Kryn Ambassador Icarus moments ago stormed out of the talks, apparently frustrated with the lack of progress. The conflict began when the ambassador said, quote, even the Kryn can no longer deny the truth of the situation and that they don't understand how anyone could defend our right to keep such a hazardous technology. Until last week, Icarus maintained the Kryn's usual position that each race should be allowed complete autonomy over its own technologies. But their attitude changed soon after Agent 5 was arrested. Since then, the Kryn ambassador has repeatedly tried to gain the support of all the other envoys in fighting for the abolishment of time travel. When this last plea once again met with resistance, Icarus launched into a tirade, exclaiming that if they had known better, they would not have voted to let such an obstinate and naive race as humanity into the symbiotry. He then abruptly departed. The talks will go on despite the Kryn withdrawal. The Kryn have drastically changed their position. However, if you watch the extra video, you would already know that they changed position, but this is actually a very important bit of information in terms of um, some puzzles later on. We can just skip through the rest of the news because we've already seen it. So, let's get into more about Michelle. I mentioned that she had a bit more to her motivations than simply fear, and she was sending time travel technology to another race who was going to give it to any race in the symbiotry that wants it. So, technically she was supporting the appeal for sharing the technology. But her reason for sharing was so that they were safe? It's a bit muddled right now. It will make sense eventually, though. 
It's weird how she wanted to share the technology, but she didn't do it openly. She went through planting the technology through the Louvre auction pieces in order to make sure that her spread of the technology was secure and the TSA would not be able to stop it from happening. So why would she go through all that trouble in order to do it? Now, if also, the Kryn have moved from their appeal of denial, or each race has sovereignty over their own technology, into dismantling it. The third viewpoint. They would join- So let's look at the Kryn for a moment, because apparently that is the center focus. Also another thing is that, as to what Michelle was saying, we don't actually know who her contact is. She just said contact. However, there is a bunch of information that we've already seen. If you remember, the, the Kryn are the people, are the water people. They live in the water environment, aqueous environment. However, if you look at their information here, which you actually have to, you can see that sensory perception, their sight is on the Klegmar radiation, or Klegman, apparently the post-it note said that, but also the Environ cartridge, before we put the lens filter on, said that it needed to be used in the Klegmar radiation band. Also the post-it note said that the communication for vocal was 11 kilohertz. That is something very important. It's something very important. Also, they have a transport prefix. We have a transport code now. But make note of this prefix here as well. 272. They would It is safe to say that the Kryn are the people who Michelle were giving the technology to. I believe it's safe to say that judging from the conclusions of what we have here. Here is it again. It's supposed to be Clegmar. For some reason it's Clegman here. Don't know why. However, that leads to another issue. The Corinne have switched sides, and they've never been on the side of sharing. So, the Corinne have been lying about wanting to share the technology with Michelle. Michelle's be even being deceived. So that's an important message there, is that the Kryn have their own reasons for wanting the time travel technology that are not known to us, because they wanted technology to be autonomous to the race who has it. Now they want to destroy the technology, but in this case, Michelle has given the technology to the Kryn. Nobody knows about this, so if the dismantling appeal goes through, that means that the Kryn are the only ones who have the time, time travel technology left. Which means that they can do a lot of bad things. So with that... With that explanation, we can finally go over here and use the transporter that Michelle used. Destination address code. Well, we have that transport code. Address represents a diplomatic orbital link, so it goes to the embassy, I think. Enter proper alien prefix. Well, you know what? Instead of bumping heads with the Corinne without any knowledge of what's going on, we should really just go to the proper authorities. We should actually go and talk to the Sorolans. Um, so if you actually go back to the INN News Network and look at all of the races, you'll get different uh, prefix codes. And the Swollens are 707. Hmm. This brings back old memories of the global transporter machine. Alright then, let's go see the Swollens. not. Um, yeah, that transport code only goes to one specific place. Having entered the wrong alien prefix code, Agent 5 found himself surrounded by hungry aliens who had just placed an order for Kung Pao Chicken. Although they never tried that dish before, 
They liked how it was crunchy on the outside and soft in the middle. The next kid had been notified. So yes, we're... Unfortunately, we don't get any more hints from Arthur, so we're done with the total amount of hints, which is 151 plus 3, I guess? Yeah. Oh no, alien fingers! Alien fingers. Alien tentacles. Ah! Where did we actually go? Because none of these people are this Rollins. We just kind of have random aliens here. Anyway, let's head back and put in the right prefix code this time. All right, and if you need a refresher for the proper prefix, it's 272. All right, now we can head over to the Kryn and take back what's rightfully humans. So I'll see you next time, everyone, for the finale.